Clyde Gamers. What's up guys, this is your boy RG Madow, and guess what, this is the start of something new on Recline Gamers, that's right, y'all have been waiting for it, and looky here, it is finally here, it is the Wi-Fi Battles. Now, looking at this little team preview right here, my opponent, you know, he has a good team, and on his team, I see a bunch of huge threats, such as the Ursaring, because I can't set up Toxic Spikes with that Ursaring around, because if I do, then that Ursaring's quick feet will just become activated and it can go through my whole entire team. Now, the Saws Buck can also outspeed a lot of things on my team. He can definitely take out my goalie pretty easily. Darn Kuno can sponge a lot of those hits and hit my Cradilly for super effective damage, including my Swallow and my goaler. And the Fero if Choice Scarf can give him a lot of switch initiative and keep his momentum going. So anyway, um, why don't we get started with the vid? Now, let's see, I was a little ahead of myself, oh well. Now, um, I'm going to lead off with Lightbird, and then my opponent, Nico, will lead on, will lead off with his Articuno. Now, I'm going to go straight for the substitute thinking, Maybe he's predicting the switch, go for Toxic, whatever. I, I just wanted to scout out what he would do, and if he did go for a Toxic or whatever, I could easily encore him into it. So it was a win-win. However, he ends up going for the Ice Beam, and I, which was the smart play on his part, because the majority of my team just doesn't want to take that Ice Beam. And now, I don't want to go into my Electros to take it and hit him with a Thunderbolt or whatever, because I want to keep it at a uh, pretty high health at this point in the game. So I go for Swagger instead, hoping that he will hit himself on the confusion however he does break through the confusion and unfortunately for me does land the critical hit ice beam on my life bird. now i'm I, i'm pretty sure that that crit did not matter whatsoever because life bird, you know it's terrible defenses but maybe it did i don't know the spread on the kuno and i i honestly didn't know but anyway i go into golard just so i could um scare him off with the stone edge and as, and then, as you will see here, crit for crit. Unfortunately for him, I will get a crit on the Stone Edge to take out the Luxray, so it's really a 5 5 at this point. Uh, now, he, he notices here that I am Life Lord, so the Articuno, I'm pretty sure, will be able to outspeed later on in the game. But it was nice to just, just like fake a Choice Scarf or whatever, try to scare that Articuno out. Anyway, I go out to my Cordelia against this Karakosta, and I figured he was going to Shell Smash, but in case he didn't, I didn't want my Golurk to go down to a Waterfall. Now, Cordelia, even though the Karakosta just Shell Smashed, I have complete faith in Cordelia to, to be able to take the hit. So, well, as he hits me for the, Aqua, for the Aqua Jet, he doesn't realize that Cordelia gets Storm Drain, which ends up boosting his, his special attack by one stage and it makes me not take any damage whatsoever. So because I'm able to hit him with the super effective Earth Power, it doesn't KO, but then again, it didn't matter because he has 30. So either way, it's fine. It's a solid two shot. So I'm gonna take this time to set up Stealth Rocks. No, the only thing he could really do is Earthquake me and I can just recover on the next turn. Plus, I really needed those Stealth Rocks up. That way, so his Articuno, Articuno would take a major hit once coming in. Now, um. After this earthquake, I'm just going to keep on recovering, trying to recover up to a certain point where I feel satisfied that after recovery and leftovers gain, that after I get hit by one of his earthquakes, you know, I'd be at a certain amount of health where I could take a hit. So, like I'm saying, I'm just going to keep on recovering here, just trying to get that health back. Cause I'm, once this Articuno comes in, because I know for a fact that Articuno is going to come in and try to hit me with the Ice Beam, now, once that comes in, you know, I got I need to be able to take that Ice Beam. So, I end up um, KOing the Karakosta this turn with the Earth Power after this Earthquake. And as you will see, because of all those recovers, I, I am able to get above 150 HP, which should be enough to be able to live an Ice Beam. I'm not, don't quote me on that, because the Ice Beam is super effective, and it is stacked bad because Articuno is an ice type so I'm not entirely sure if I will be able to survive it however I was pretty confident since Cradilly does have good special defenses even though this Cradilly is a physical bulky Cradilly you know I I was hoping that I could live that ice beam however the world may never know because he gets a super effective crit 
So another crit for a crit. I gotta use this crit against the Caracosta. He might have gotten a good crit against the Fidelity. Once again, not entirely sure. Anyway, I set out my Swallow. Because at this point, I believe Raybird would be able to KO. Like, I know Articuno is really bulky. But I figured Swallow's nothing to, to joke around with. He hits hard, even without Guts activated. However, the Brave Bird does not KO, at least in that red health. And because of that, my solo goes down to uh, Ice Beam. Now, if I did have my Guts activated, I'm pretty sure the Brave Bird would have been able to KO, but hey, that's just the game. Now, I'm going to send out my Electros, because I don't want to send out my Golic, since odds are his Dunnikuno will outspeed. So, I do send out my Electros just to Volt Switch out of there. And kill the or Thunderbolt, my fault. Thunderbolt Articuno hit some super effective damage and K and KO it. That Articuno was a huge problem, like I said in the preview. It, it sponges so many hits. And since I have a lack of like a good fighting, fast fighting or fast stone or fast rock presence on my team, it's, you know it. I have to do so. Anyway, he's gonna send out his ring. He's gonna go for the Swords Dance this turn, and I can't do anything about it at this point, other than stay in and Thunderbolt, because I don't want him at full health, at full health, and Swords Dance, with Swords Dance, he just uses Swords Dance, and he has Quick Feet activated, I don't want that, so, so I really need to hit him with Thunderbolt, and since I am a choice spec, the Electros is gonna do massive damage, to the point where, he's at very low red health, and he's poisoned, which is nice, because of this, I'm allowed to go out to my Golur, to take the Facade, and now I'm basically toxic stalling his Ursa Ring. But at this point, I know he's going to go for the Crunch. And I really need my Electros. So I'm going to go out into my um, Tentacool, who didn't really see much light during this match, to take the Crunch. I didn't think it was going to take it well at all. In fact, I, I expected it to go down. However, it lives with 4 HP, which is crazy. It is crazy. That should have never happened. Tentacool should have went down, but oh well. It's just the game. Now, he's going to send out Fero, and obviously Fero is going to revenge kill my tentacle. I'm not about to switch. I'm not about to play like, hey, I can survive this because I can. This is game. I'm at 4 HP. Anyway, I'm going to send out my Electros after this just so I can um, kill off the Fero. Now, I was debating, should I send out Golurk to take the drill pack? Because if it was Choice Scarf Fero and he went for drill pack, I figured I could survive that. However, I, I didn't think that Gullark would be able to survive a Drill Peck from a Fero that is Life Orb because Fero does have really good attack. It has some good attacks that. But anyway, I'm able to revenge kill off the Fero with the Volt Switch and I'm going to send out my Gullark and he's down to his last Pokemon which happens to be his Saw's Buck. So that's a good game as it is because as you will see, Saw's Buck's natural speed will definitely be able to outspeed an uh, unboosted Golar. I wasn't able to really use Rock Polish on. If I had Rock Polish up, I don't know, I, I probably would have been able to outspeed it. But then again, unless he was Choice Scarf. But then again, you know, it you know, it, it probably wouldn't have KO'd. So I probably wouldn't have KO'd with the Earthquake or the Stone Edge. So, you know, it's what it is. And as you'll see... The Saw's Book will be able to take out my Golic in one hit, and then at the range that my Electros is at, it will be able to take out Electros fairly easily. So that's good game, Nico. He's a really cool guy. He doesn't have a YouTube channel, so, you know, is what it is. But anyway, I'm RG Madow, and I will see y'all later.